Welcome back to the Superstar Roundup. The tournament is finally here and the production is ramping up to max speeds, or at least trying to. The number of drawings permitted per episode has been raised from 3,500 to 4,500, and the series director Tatsuya Nagamine has asked the staff to really put their all into animating these new characters. Episode 97 kicks things off with a first half supervised by Yukihiro Kitano. This would normally cause concern, but thankfully Takio Ide produces some lovely corrections that mask any of the potentially poor looking scenes. We've got Osamu Ishikawa as an assistant supervisor and some naturally talented animators such as Miyuki Yokoyama and Chu Yong Se to help keep those visuals up to par. The first half here is relatively light on action, but the large majority of it comes from Chu Yong Se. In particular, the highlight of the episode, which shows Lily Boo attacking Basil, I really love the effects work as she darts away. This sequence, however, does contain something that's become a bit of a talking point, and that's reused animation. Throughout the two episodes we're covering today, there's a fair bit of it, and I want to take the time to address it, since my little comparison video kind of blew up and I don't feel like the full context has really been put out there. In anime, you have something called bank, which is a term used for stock animations. You see it in Pokemon for things like power-ups and attacks, or magical girl shows like Procure for the transformations. These are high quality animations created with the sole intent to be used over and over. In Dragon Ball Super, you'll see formal bank animation like this with characters like Kale and Brienne. Their wonderful transformations are very clearly created with the intent of being reused. This is totally fine and very much standard practice. You'll also find that it's quite common to reuse the same animation multiple times within an episode. For example, the shot of Basil jumping up into the sky is reused many times here. This is all pretty standard and you'll see it throughout the various Dragon Ball shows quite a lot. What's not particularly common is taking bits of regular animation, that is animation that is created for one specific episode, and reusing it again and again. This sort of piecemeal reuse of scenes isn't standard practice, and understandably the use of it in this episode and the one that follows has come under a bit of fire from some fans. There are two sides to this coin. On one, it showcases that despite Super's vast improvement to its production environment, it's still not quite equipped to handle the action demands of a tournament like this. That's not really unexpected, and I'm sure those of you who have been subscribed to me for a while know that before this arc even began, I said there was no way they could pull this off properly. On the other, it demonstrates the series director's understanding of this fact, and makes this reuse a clearly calculated decision to ensure solid new animation can be completed to surround it, or for the more pivotal moments of the arc which hopefully won't be reusing scenes, with the exception of some stuff in the intro. From talking to animators who work on Super, it's clear this is a very, very tough time for them. So so while it's a bit disappointing, at the very least it's for a good reason, and not a needless shortcut. Back to the episode then, Hirotaka Ni takes over supervising for the second half. Outside of some stills that showcase his style, the action is similarly minimal to the first half in terms of new animation. The only interesting part is Napapa being pushed back by Basil, which is once again the work of Chu Yong Se. I get the feeling he's going to be the Higashide of this tournament. Frankly though, I didn't really like this episode. It was poorly directed and everything felt very haphazard, so let's move on to episode 98, which is much more together. This is from Kaori Takamura, whose style I still don't know since her halves are almost always corrected, and Masahiro Shimanuki, someone we all know and love. The first half here is largely corrected by Miyako Suji, with the action primarily coming from Futoshi Higashide. It's nice enough and works far better with the Ryu scenes than last week, likely thanks to this week's stronger direction in general. Still, I'm hoping he has the chance to do some stronger work in the future. I feel like we haven't seen anything noteworthy from him since episode 84. Before the half ends, we get some cool looking stills that I think may actually be from Tadayoshi Yamamuro. As far as I've been told, it's not Chu's work, and nobody tends to draw muscles as big as these other than Yamamuro, so I think this may be another case like episode 90 where he stepped in to help out. Heading into the second half then, and this becomes Shimanuki's domain, his corrections are pretty strong actually, though things do begin with some quite unsightly work from the Toei Animation Philippines guys. I sometimes feel a bit xenophobic picking on some of the Filipino animators, but trust me, even some of the Japanese staff get upset by what they put out, especially if it affects their own work. 
Much like last week, it's Chu Young Sir who carries this half, producing countless scenes, whether it be Lavender and Hop attacking Vegeta, Chapel breathing fire, or Hisop firing ice, it's all his work. And it's all pretty heavily corrected by Shimanuki too, which as we know is really where he shines. Chu's strongest scene in this episode is where Vegeta finishes off Hop though, it's actually a homage to one of Naoto Shishida's scenes back in Dragon Ball Z. Next we have Kenji Miyuma animating Vegeta finishing off Hisop, again it's very heavily corrected by Shimanuki, but you can catch his distinctive effect shapes if you go frame by frame. His work carries on into the final hand to hand scenes of the episode with Vegeta punching Basil and Lavender away, followed by my favourite cut which is Goku blowing away Basil and Bergamo. The timing is super nice and I love his explosions so much, his effects work is really really chunky. To wrap things up, Masahiro Shimanuki delivers the Kamehameha and Final Flash combo, or the Final Kamehameha. It's pretty much exactly the same effects work that we saw back in episode 66. It's nothing too special, but it definitely has impact. Personally, I found this episode to be a significant step up from last week, so I hope each episode from here on out continues to get better and better and better as we head towards the finale. We did also get a new ending, which is solo animated by Tadayoshi Yamamuro. It's mostly comprised of stills, and personally I wasn't a big fan of them but I do appreciate the general art direction, it has a nice atmosphere to it. Next week is supervised by Osamu Ishikawa and does seem to have some cuts by Naoki Tate so I'm really looking forward to that. Hope you enjoyed this video though, let me know what your thoughts are on the tournament so far, be sure to rate and subscribe and I will see you next time.